This is a Dangerous Prototypes workshop update. It's a few days before Christmas. If you open your new Bus Pirate or IR toy on Christmas and need some help, give us a shout. We'll be in the forum, even on Christmas Day. In this update, we're going to talk about firmware and then take a few minutes to talk about the soldering station because uh, Mick asked some questions about it in the comments last time. So for firmware, first up we've got Bus Pirate version 6 firmware coming out. That'll be for hardware version 3 and version 4. Uh, Brent's pushed a whole bunch of new features into it, an auto baud feature uh, to detect the UART baud rate or speed. Uh, we've got uh, some fixes to the Bus Pirate version 4. There were just a, a number of showstopper bugs in Bus Pirate version 4. We've got those fixed in the SPI mode, in the LCD mode, in the UART mode, and a few others. Um, we've also got the onboard EE prom demo for the Bus Pirate version 4 working, so we'll bring you that video, which is originally supposed to be Bus Pirate uh, weekday 4. Uh, sometime right after Christmas. Uh, so we'll release that firmware hopefully tomorrow. Now, also coming out is Bus Pirate firmware, sorry, is IR Toy firmware version 22. And uh, we found two bugs in version 21 of the firmware. Uh, the first was when you transmit a packet that's exactly 48 bytes long, it crashes the transmit mode. That seems to be a problem with the USB stack, and JTR has a handle on that. Uh, also, there seems to be some problems changing the pulse width modulator frequency on the transmit. We haven't solved that yet, but I'm going to take a look at it in the next day or two. We'll get that out hopefully uh, by Monday or Tuesday of next week. Now, last up, we're going to talk about the IOA soldering station. This is our IOA 968 rework station. It's got three features. It's got a soldering iron with adjustable temperature a hot air tool that blows hot air at different temperatures and the third feature is a fume extractor so it sucks up the smoke when you solder so the fumes don't get up into your face. And we've reviewed this a couple times. Uh, I've reviewed it on Hackaday. Uh, we, we have it on our tool list wiki which has a review of all the tools that we use in the workshop so check that out. We'll link to it below. Uh, people always ask about it so I thought I'd go over it really quick in a video. And so the main feature is the soldering iron and uh, no, it's, uh, I believe, a 30 or 40 watt soldering iron. It does the job. It's got adjustable temperature control by the knob here. The fume extractor part, you can see there, is the metal tube attached to the iron. So that when you solder and you hit flux or rosin or stuff, that actually, it sucks up the fumes through the tube attached to the cord. Now, unfortunately, I think this is a pretty poor design decision but it, it, it blows them out the hot air rework tool. So I think long term probably rosin fumes from the soldering build up inside the rework tool. One complaint I have is the holder. It kind of has a space for the fume uh, extractor, but it doesn't fit very well and we've had some broken handles because of that. But replacement handles are about $14 for two, so they're not too pricey. The rework tool is this part. This is uh, something you hold to blow hot air. We don't solder with it very often. Uh, some people solder with them. Maybe if you do a QFN chip, you need something like this to solder it. But in general, we solder everything with an iron. We use this to do repairs. If we need to lift up or recycle a chip, a small SOT23 part, really anything that we need to pull off of a board, that's what we use hot air for the most. The soldering station is probably seven or eight years old now. Uh, it still works great and we still use it for the soldering iron uh, for all of our prototypes. But the hot air has actually gone out. Somewhere in the cord uh, there's a short in the wire that carries the temperature from the sensor in the hot air gun into the main box. And that causes it to short out and it views the temperature as more than 900 degrees and then some sort of emergency shutdown procedure happens and it, it cools itself off and, and the iron essentially crashes. Uh, but the soldering part still works great and we really do like the fume extraction so we keep it around for that. But we've replaced the hot air part with a dedicated hot air station and I'll talk about that some other time. Now I thought just really quick I'd show you how the soldering station works. So for soldering just turn on the button and then use this knob to adjust the temperature. The smoke extractor is this button and it uses the pump from the rework station to suck the fumes through the tube and blows them out of the rework tool here. It's okay right now in terms of volume 
but if we give it five minutes, it'll kick it up a notch and it gets really loud and rattly for some reason. I'm not sure why that is, but I hear it happens on most of them. Okay. The rework tool is the next button, and you actually have to reset it and then set a temperature for it using the up and down buttons in the digital gauge here. It's a lot quieter, but you can adjust the amount of air that goes through it here, and the ball floats up and down. Now this will probably heat up and work for a second, but if we move the cord the wrong way, then it'll short out and shut down. So I'm just going to just shut it off. It has an automatic cool down feature, so when you turn the hot air off, it keeps blowing air through it until it reaches 90 degrees or room temperature or some safe temperature. We really like this iron and highly recommend it. For 100 bucks, you get both tools you need for surface mount soldering. A soldering iron with adjustable temperature and a decent hot air rework tool. It did break on us after seven or eight years, but that's okay. It paid for itself over and over and over again. That's it for this workshop update. We're going to try to bring you a short update on what's going on in our workshop two or three times a week. We've also got some new camera mounts coming, so not everything's going to be filmed at this odd angle. And uh, we've got some extra cameras as well so that we can film from over the soldering station and from different angles. Uh, next week, we're going to look at our transistor tester that we built and some of the DIY versions that other people have put together. And uh, we'll have some other good stuff. Thanks for watching.